Well, what's up, y'all? It is BYTA. I'm Pastor Reed. I'm Deja Jennings. I'm Kamaya Baker. All right, y'all. So we're going to give y'all a chance to go ahead and get in here and um, go ahead and get yourselves comfortable. Go ahead and invite all your friends and tell them they starting. They starting. Yes. They starting BYTA. If your friends don't have Instagram or their parents made them get off Instagram, Hey, just tell them, um, <laughs> call in. They can call in, right? Yes. If your phone is off, just tell them use somebody else's Instagram. I don't care what you got to do, but just make sure you do it. This is about to be amazing tonight, and we believe that your life is about to shift, all right? So we're going to give you all a few few opportunities, just to, um, a few more moments just to come on in. Deja, let them know a little about yourself. Where were you born and raised? Who are your parents? What do you do for the kingdom of God? <laughs> Glad you asked. <laughs> my name is Deja Jennings. Um, my parents are Apostle Travis and Pastor Stephanie L. Jennings, the senior pastors of the Harvest Tabernacle Church. Um, I am a minister here at the Harvest. I'm also on the youth board yes. at the Harvest Tabernacle Church. I help out in any capacity I can. I just love our youth ministry. I think that we're probably one of the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I believe. We've been prideful. We just we just been <laughs> confident in who God has created us to be. All right, so that's Deja, y'all. This is Kamaya. Tell them a little about yourself, what you do here at the church. All right, you guys, my name is Kamaya Baker. I am from Miami, Florida, and I attend the Harvest Tabernacle Church. You know, the best church on this side of heaven. Um, I am an intercessor, and I am also a minister in training. So, yeah. Hey. All right, Kamaya. All right, well, my name is Enrique Holmes. I'm the youth pastor here at the Harvest Tabernacle Church. It's a privilege and an honor to be here to assist and serve the vision of our leaders, yes. Deja's parents, <laughs> Apostle Travis, and Pastor Stephanie Jennings. Well, y'all, we're going to jump right on into it. Um, we'll, we'll be replaying this thing on Facebook. We're going we're gonna to download it and we're going to put yes. it on Facebook. I know a lot of y'all ran away from Facebook because your parents <laughs> came on Facebook. But guess what? We're going to put it on there so you'll have a reason to go and follow us on Facebook. If you're not already following us on Instagram, go ahead and do it. Let us see those hearts. We see the hearts already coming. I believe that tonight is going to be amazing. Yes. So let's go ahead and jump into it. What is Beyond the Altar? Beyond the Altar is um, we, our board got together with some of our young people. And they were just asking us serious questions like, Pastor Reed, okay, I see we're doing revivals. I see we're doing conferences. We done been to 10,000 revivals, <laughs> and I'm only 12 years old. But it seems like after the altar, yeah. the thing that I thought I left at the altar, it still, it meets me back in my bedroom. And I'm able to stay consistent for a week, yep. for a month, for a day, for an hour, you know. <laughs> and so, the, <laughs> And so, um, you know, we, what we wanted to do is just create a community yeah. where young people, young adults, whoever can come in and be able to ask questions, be able to, you know, just get with like-minded mm -hmm. believers and um, Christians and just be able to get tips and strategies on how to be a successful Christian. Will you be a perfect Christian? Oh. Absolutely not, but you can strive to be more like Christ every single day. And so we hope that something today um, and every Thursday from now on helps you to become a better Christian. So this is beyond the altar. Yes. All right, y'all. So you might be wondering for those who don't have a Snapchat or those who are like me that has a Snapchat, but I'm only on there to put videos and pictures up. There's something called Snap Streets, yes. Yes. and um, I don't I don't believe that I can do it justice. So Kamaya, let them know <laughs> a little bit about what a Snap Streak is. All right, y'all. So a Snap Streak is nothing more but a consistent communication of multimedia messages right so that means all you have to do is you send a picture or a video to a person on the other side of the phone right but the only way that it can work is if the person sends a picture or a video back mm -hmm. but the streak starts in a three day minimum so after the third day that's when the streak starts it starts with the number three and you go on from four five six seven eight nine ten but if you do not send a picture or a video in a 24 hour time frame your streak ends. Yeah. So what if so what if I write you hey? Hey. And then you write me hey back. So that's a streak? No, no, no. You have to send a picture or a video and you can say hey. Okay. You can't just type mm -hmm. it though. You can't just type it. All right. Okay, so I get it. All right, so a, a street. Snap streets. All right, so um we put our young people on a on a fourteen day consecration. <laughs> y'all y'all remember that? Did, were y'all successful in it? Yes, yes, I was. I was. All all fourteen days. I was 
But I did. It was tough on the social media, but hey, I got through. Y'all, let me tell you, we took away food, just things day by day, yeah. just to show them that fasting is not really that hard. Mm-hmm. But when we got down to like day 12, 13, that's when we started taking away um, social media. Yeah. One day was for half a day. One day, um, it was for a whole 24 hours. And the first thing they start saying is, Pastor Reed, what about my streets? Exactly. <laughs> that went around a little bit. But they was like, Pastor Reed, what about my streets? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? What are, what are you talking about a street? And for, for those people who called in, um, tell your friends, they can go in and call on in now. Um, they can hear what, what's going on. But but here's the thing. They was like, Pastor Reed, what about my streets? Like, you know, I got, I'm on day 160. I'm on day 500, if you're Deja. 500? <laughs> you know, like, they really been doing this thing. And so I was just like, all right. So y'all are, like, really obsessed with, like, these streets. Constant communication with, with one of your friends or pals or whatever. Uh, or one of your followers on Snapchat. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so if you can create a street with your friends, what if we created spiritual streets mm. with the Lord? But Kamaya, she explained it to me. She was like, Pastor Rick, one, one of the main things is both people, both parties have to actually communicate yeah. with one another. And so I was like, okay, so one person can't just say something and then like the other person, you know, got their phone taken by their parent so they can't <laughs> say nothing. It won't still keep up the street. She was like, nah, both people have to say something. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so I called Deja. I was like, so Deja, in order for it to be a streak, uh-huh. it has to be a two-way street. So it has to be communication. Oh, come on. It has to be communication between two parties. So in your um, communication with the Lord, we know God wakes up, uh, um, wakes us up every single morning. Yes. Gives us new mercies every single day. You told God that you weren't gonna do it no more. He still forgives you. So it has to be a two-way street. God, because even in your friendships and relationship, you stop. You stop dating Bernie. You stop dating Letitia. But why? <laughs> because you said, "Hey, I got tired of being the only one to text. I always, if, if I don't text you first, then the communication <laughs> won't even be there." And so think about how God feels when He talks to us constantly. Yeah. And we, we never initiate a conversation or talk back to him unless we get in trouble. We're like, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I won't ever do it again. So in order for it to be a streak, it has to be a two-way streak. All right, then Kamai was like, there has to be a minimum of three days uh-huh. before it's even counted. Why? Because they want Snapchat want to make sure that you're serious about it. Serious. So, so one thing that I got from it, Kamai, is that you have to have consistency. Yeah. When praying tonight... Um, our topic for the entire month is snap streets but what we're going to be hitting on tonight is prayer, prayer. and so we want to make sure that it's a two-way street because that's that's how effective communication happens not just one person is talking but both parties are talking then number two you have to make sure um, that that is consistent yeah. on Snapchat. They won't take your street serious unless you do it for at least three days. You know what I mean? Really? And so you have to make sure that you speak to God uh, at, at least three days in a row so we can just kind of create a new habit then the last one that kind of did it for me was she said it has to in order for it to be counted as a street it has to be a multimedia message mm. what does that mean either a video or a picture but i found out that some of y'all just be taking pictures of the dark and sending the picture <laughs> yeah y'all didn't be really doing nothing but but that kind of got me because i was like kamaya why why can't you just send words i say hey to deja she say hey back to me it's a street yeah. you know we're doing it and then kamaya was like no you have to do a multimedia message which let me know that um actions speak louder than words oh, wow. You can't just sit here and say, oh, I'm going to pray, um, but I'm not going to live what I'm praying about. Mm-hmm. But you actually have to make Good. sure that your actions matches your words. Mm-hmm. If somebody just keep telling you all day and all night, why are we talking about relationships? <laughs> well, maybe because that just did relationship goals. Yeah. Now, actions speak louder than words. If somebody just keep telling you, I love you, I love you, I love you, but they going upside your head, Come they on. cheating on you with one of the cheerleaders, oh. you know what I mean? You're going to be mm-hmm. like, okay, I hear what your mouth is saying, but what do actions. actions do, though? What? And so you have to make sure that your that your communication with the Lord yeah. also has some action to back it up. But but we want to talk about prayer. What is why is prayer so important? So Deja, if you could let them know why is prayer important to you or just important for every believer. 
So I believe, um, we're talking about prayer streaks. So I believe prayer, prayer is the communication with God. You know, that's when you commune, you connect, you converse with God. And normally, Pastor Rick, I've um, been in school for quite some minute and somebody came to me the other day and they was like, why do I have to pray? Like, shouldn't God know like all my needs? Like, why do I have to pray? And so this is what, <laughs> this is what I got. The person said, why do I have to pray? And I was like, well, just as the Bible is so important for teaching us about who Jesus is and what he has done for us and who we are in him. So prayer is a key of building a, a relationship, a deeper relationship with God. You know, when we read the Bible, Pastor Rick, uh, God speaks to us. But when we pray, we speak to God. Come on. You know, sometimes we can be selfish and not even know that we're like, God, we just want to hear from you. We just want to, we want a word. We want to just hear from you. Yeah. But God is saying, when am I going to hear from you? Come on. You know, so it's the time and the season, believer, for you to open up your mouth and pray to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. So you got to use those words. And then also, Pastor Rick, the Bible says that when the righteous cry, the Lord hears and delivers them. So you mean to tell me, Deja, that if I pray, God's going to hear me? Yes. He is going to hear you and deliver you. Come on. But deliverance. it only happens when you're in the right position, the right posture, and in the right place with God. Wow. That's why it says when the righteous cry. Mm -hmm. Not the unrighteous, but the righteous. Yeah. So the Bible says that my sheep hears my voice, mm -hmm. and I know them, and they will follow me. So you have to be a part of the sheep. Are you a part of the sheep? Are you a little lone wolf? Come on. Jesus. <laughs> So I came to let you know that not only that your voice is going to be heard, but you have to be in the right standing. You have to be in the right posture, the right place, mm -hmm. and even the right position in this season if you're going to, you know, want God to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then somebody might be asking a question right now. I, I, I feel you in Instagram land. Um, well, Pastor e, like, what is... You know, press streak in the Bible. Yeah. Well, the Bible actually says in First Thessalonians, it says, "Pray without ceasing." That sounds like a streak to me. Yeah. Because a streak is something that doesn't end. It's like doing something continuously, oh, something order. consistently. Yeah. So the Bible tells us, "Pray without ceasing. Don't stop." Um. And, and I, some people, um, I don't want you guys to be religious about it. When we yeah. say press streak. It, like don't don't try to be religious about it like oh I gotta pray every day at 12 o'clock I gotta pray every, instead of eating lunch I'm gonna pray you know you know like no nah. you, you don't have to don't try to lock God in the box Come on. like no for real when you feel it when you need them yeah. when you feel like you don't need them that's probably when you really should pray that's right. the most come on you're like how important is prayer to you Prayer is extremely important. That's the only way I can get through my day. <laughs> it is. Because without, because he is the one who sets my day straight. Wow. You know, he's That's the one good. who can go before me and make every crooked path straight. Wow. So, yeah. you know, I need him to you know, go ahead and do what he needs to do so I can do what I need to do. Absolutely. Somebody put some hearts on that. I felt that. If, if, if you do what you need to do, God's going to do it. Matter of fact, God's going to do what he needs to do already. He's already done what yep. he needs to do. So it's like it's time for us to do our part. And like Minister Deja said, like we always have our hand out to the Lord. Like, God, I want to hear your voice. Give me a word. God, deliver me. Well, God is saying like, all right, well, when the righteous cry. Yeah. Then I will. Could it be that the reason why we're still stuck in our same mess in our last season and our same struggle is because we fail to cry out to God? Because the Bible says when the righteous cry, that's when the Lord will yeah. hear you. When was the last time God heard you? And it wasn't a complaint. When was the last time God heard you and it wasn't a 911? God, I'm in trouble. Get me out of this mess. When you knew you shouldn't have been in the bed anyway. When you knew you shouldn't have jumped out the window to try to run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, here's the thing, y'all. Every single Thursday, we'll be on here. Hope you guys have gotten some nuggets. It ain't over yet. We told you guys until 8.30. And so now is the portion where we're going to begin to answer some questions that have been sent in. So they should go ahead and get on the, the Hype um, Instagram because I believe some people are going to probably ask, them, um, ask some more questions. So we can actually catch some of those live questions as well. But we had some, some scholars. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who sent in some questions for us. And so I'm going to go ahead and read, um, read one. And you guys can, whoever want to answer it, can go ahead and answer it. Um, somebody asked the question, y'all. What is the time limit on prayer? There's what is the time limit on prayer? Well, I believe there's no time limit on prayer. There is no. There is no. You got, I mean, you got, I believe, you know, 
for every believer or every Christian, you gotta start where you are. Mm -hmm. So wow. if you good. if you know that you're not, you know, a early morning person, but you know that you be up late at night, probably instead of watching TV, <laughs> yes. you can pray. That's good. And then you might it doesn't have to be for like an hour or two hours. You know, you have to start where you are. You might be like, okay, I can probably pray for five minutes. Mm -hmm. But then don't let that five minutes be every day. You can right. add on a minute, you know, and then by a month. You're like an hour. And then by two months, you can pray for five hours. Oh, Come on. So. <laughs> when last time you pray for five hours? My God. <laughs> I'm yet believing. <laughs> No, but that's good. That it's good. like sometimes we put limits on God. Yeah. And it's like today God might say, hey, give me a good five minutes. Mm -hmm. But then tomorrow God might say, give me a whole hour. Yeah. You don't want to put a limit on God and say, oh, today I'm just going to set my yeah. alarm clock mm -hmm. for, to go off at Thank 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But what if your prayer gets good at 30 minutes? Come on. You know what I mean? And so don't don't be so caught up in the quantity that you forget about the quality of it. Because I can talk good. to somebody. I can talk, I've talked to somebody <laughs> at the church before and they just sitting there talking my ear off for like five hours. Hours. I've been at five hours. But like five hours, I'm just sitting there like this has to be the longest conversation of my life. And there was no quality there was no quality in it at all. I don't remember nothing from it. But I talked to somebody in passing, like, what's up? All right. And it was like I remember to this day what yeah. we talked about. Because it's not always about the quantity. Am I saying give God a minute every single day? Am I saying give God five minutes every day? No. But I believe that as you mature in your prayer life yeah. and as you continue your street, mm -hmm. it'll get greater and greater. It starts at three and then it gets to 500. It gets mm -hmm. to, you know, 167. And just like your prayer street increase, your prayer, um, mm -hmm. just like your snap street increases, your prayer street will yeah. increase. And you'll have something to talk to God about. Because, I mean, he's a good conversation yes, piece, yes. if I can say so myself. Yes. All right, so there's another question. How do you pray without being distracted? And you guys can ask your questions on there as well. And Minister mm -hmm. Danger try to grab them. But Kamaya, answer like how do how do you pray without getting distracted? Okay, well I used to have this problem all the time, so I know I know that. Okay, what I didn't know then. Yeah. All right, so how do I pray without being distracted? Well, first, if you find social media to be distracted, text messaging to be, if you find your phone to be distracted, put it up. That's it. You know, you just have to get yourself. You know, you have to separate yourself. From anything that can distract you, that's your phone, people, you can't pray in front of your brother, your sister, your mm -hmm. friends. Separate yourself for a moment. You know, it might be five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, two hours. But five hours. <laughs> <laughs> but separate yourself. And so you can give God all the time that he needs so he can give you what you need, you know? Absolutely. Like, okay. like Kamaya, like she gave us actual practical ways to do it. Yeah. it it's really not that hard. You know what distracts you? You know, hey, if you say I'm going on a diet, you're not gonna go to, uh, you know, you're not gonna go past Golden Corral. You're not gonna go past Ryan. You ain't gonna go past no all you can eat buffet. Why? Because you know what you're working on, and <laughs> and and prayer is work. I don't like if, if you don't have like a if you're not a good communicator, prayer is work. If it's not something that you do all the time, but I believe and we believe that you have to put in the work so that you can reap the harvest of what you're putting in. Like I don't I don't want something for nothing come on you know because when you build a, a consistent prayer life with the lord yeah. um like you will cherish it so that's you right. won't go a day without talking to god and so that's what kamaya is trying to say like she's giving us a practical ways like if you know that social media is your stronghold some of us in our subconscious our subconscious is that area of our brain that without us even knowing it controls our um it controls our actions and stuff mm -hmm. have you ever been have y'all ever been like just sitting down and all of a sudden you just when you, as soon as you grab your phone you just go right to social media and start yeah, scrolling right but Instagram. but i mean you just finished looking at everything like 30 <laughs> seconds ago uh -huh. nothing is new but like it's a habit what if your new habit became mm -hmm. praying oh, wow. instead of cussing them out you pray Y'all ain't been cussing nobody out. Oh, no. <laughs> instead of going off on your teacher or instead of shutting down. Mm -hmm. What 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 if you just what, what if you pray to God? Because some of y'all don't cuss, but you'll shut down in a second. Yeah. Shut like I mean you go sit in your room, <laughs> slam the door. Mom, mom, I, I mean I hate this house. You know, you just <laughs> in your room, just sitting down, chilling. No, but like what if what if like when that shut in time was really shutting in with God and praying? Mm. 
create a new streak. You, you've already created a streak of fear. Mm -hmm. You already created a streak of shutting down. Mm -hmm. You already created a streak of going off every yeah. time. If you looking to pop off. Somebody on, on Instagram Live right now, you're looking to pop off. Mm -hmm. You've been popping off since the year came in. How about you create a new streak? Ain't nothing wrong with having a, a streak on, on Snapchat. Yeah. We, we're not against that. Nothing wrong with you getting on, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But when was the last time you went without talking to God? When was the last time you went without opening up your Bible? Did you open up your Bible this morning and actually read that little the little Bible verse that's coming, <laughs> that's coming to your, that's just coming to your phone every single morning. But the next time you think about it, you're gonna actually be intentional and proactive. Yeah. About creating streets with the Lord. All right, so we got one more question, y'all. Wait, Pastor Reed, somebody said, um, put it on. Do not disturb. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> That, no, that's real good. <laughs> but make sure don't get a whooping though, because <laughs> somebody don't even know about do not disturb. They're gonna put that phone on do not disturb when they mad at their mama them oh. and not pick up the phone. Do but that, no, but that's that's mm -hmm. that's that adds along to Kamaya's mm -hmm. yeah. a practical way. Put your phone on. Can't nobody disturb you if you put it on do not disturb. Mm -hmm. Give God that time. Yeah. That message will still be there when you get out of prayer. That's true. If Tyrone can't wait on you to get out of <laughs> prayer, <laughs> like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, then I mean, hey, you, know, you, you probably ain't the right one for you in the first place. That's that's a, you know that's a little bit much. Did anybody else ask a question? Um, somebody said, "What do you do if you want to bring a friend to church, but they're hard to persuade?" Mm. Wow. Well, invite them to come on BYTA. Hey. This this is this is non-threatening because what we believe this BYTA is directly connected to our church. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we're at our church right now. <laughs> you know, it's directly connected to our church, mm -hmm. to the vision of our house because we we don't believe that everybody um is going to try to come to church their first encounter with God. Yeah. So, People might encounter you. That's why you got to stay prayed up so you can be oh. sensitive in the spirit yeah. so that when your friends at school need you to minister to them, maybe you minister to them at school mm -hmm. will be able to easily be able to persuade them to come to church with you. That's right. Because then when they ask you, man, like how did you know the right thing to say? <laughs> hey, I, I go to the, one of the greatest churches ever. I don't know what church you go to, but I go to the Harvest Tabernacle Church. And I would love to have you this Sunday. You know, um, and, and I believe we don't need to force people to do things. Right. Meet yeah. them at their level. Think about how God does for us. Like Minister Deja That's said at the beginning, even with prayer, start on your level. Mm -hmm. I know your mama can pray for five hours, <laughs> but maybe you can pray for five minutes right now. Give God the best five minutes you got. And let him graduate it. But and, and so that's what that's one way that you'll be able to persuade, I believe, persuade like your friends and stuff mm -hmm. to come to church with you by being sensitive to know um what to say to them, what know what not to say to them. And then you can take that friend to the Lord in prayer yeah. and say, God, hey, I've been trying, I've been trying my best to persuade Dante. There's a Dante on, on Instagram. Right <laughs> there. I've been trying to persuade Dante and don't seem like he budget. God, give me, give me strategies to be able to to lead him to come to church or whatever. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever invited a friend to church and they was like, nah? Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Well, my friends, I guess, I invited a church already. They know about Jesus, so <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as hard. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, yeah, so, but but we all won't have like great <laughs> friends like Deja. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, well, like but we have, we have, um, day and night. But like, Kamari, what about what about your friends? Okay, I have a, I have a couple friends who came to church, but mm. others they were like, "Nah, church ain't for me." You know? Okay. But that's why God said we are the church, so you wow. bring the church to them. Wow. So you yeah. know, every now and then, I bring them a little word that they need, especially after Pastor Rick has preached. You know, I, I just give them what he said. <laughs> And so here's the thing, y'all. Make sure, make sure you do whatever it takes to evangelize and meet people where they are. You might invite one friend to church, they come, another one might not. Don't give up on them. Yeah. Don't give up on them. Pray for them every single day until something breaks. You might not see the physical change on the outside, but it might be an inward change that's happening um, in them. And so, um, so yeah, do, do we have any more questions? Are we? That was it? Yeah. That's all you call? All right, y'all. So we're at the one minute mark. We told you we're going to end at 830. Mm -hmm. And so make sure you get in here. Uh, make sure you tell your friends about BYTA. We will be posting this on Facebook Live. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to challenge you guys from this day all the way until next Thursday to create a prayer street. What is that? Be intentional.